Hey everybody. So, uh, welcome to voiceover land here. I've been having some troubles with the GoPro Hero 8 Media Mod mic system. I'm sure I'm not the only one. You can find plenty of people talking about it. Maybe I'll bitch about that at some other point here. But, I'm making this video because some of you guys have been asking me how I started riding, you know, what steps I took, uh, what got me into riding, why I ride a cruiser over anything else. And uh, I figured I'd talk to you guys about that because it's a really interesting conversation. Uh, I may get into at some point here how you guys should start riding because I will say that my situation was both more than ideal and less than ideal. But we'll get into that a bit later because at the moment I am on my way out to go take a ride with the local hog chapter. I've been invited out. Figure I'll go on a ride with them on my itty bitty little 800. I'm sure they're all gonna have 25 million cc bikes that have millions of torques and like 10 horsepower. So we'll go ahead and get out there here real quick and have some fun. Oh my god, I was in time lapse the whole ride. All right. All right. So, this will be try number 4 to try and record this crap. <laughs> so, how I got started riding. I'm having the worst time with this media mod. Oh my god. Anyway. So, before I was born, my dad was a motorcycle rider. He rode a Honda Nighthawk. It was very manly back in the uh, early 80s. And when I was born, he let it go. Uh, never really got the story on that, whether it was his idea, mom's idea, I'm not gonna get into that, that's on them. But his buddy Jack, who lived in North Carolina at the time, would come and visit periodically. And he would bring a VS800 intruder and a Goldwing. He'd trailer him up when he came. And him and dad would go riding. And there were a couple of times where they put me on the back of one of those bikes. And it is a fun yet terrifying experience as a kid. When you're so small you bounce on every bump. It's, whoa, not fun. But it piqued my interest. When I was about, eh, I'd say 13, something like that, my dad and mom went out and bought motorcycles together. They were gonna go riding all the time. My dad got a VTX 1300 and my mom got a Kawasaki Vulcan 500 Limited. And I wanted to go riding with them, but of course, I'm like 13 years old, I can't ride a motorcycle. Then it is no fun being on the back of one of those when you're 13 years old, because you know, you're, you're 14 years old on the back of daddy's bike, yeah! No, you don't do that. And uh, mom's bike was a little small for me to get on the back of, plus riding on the back of mom's bike holds almost the same connotations. So, I did not ride with the family. And when I turned 20, let's say, <laughs> somewhere in there, 21 maybe, 
I uh, finally had the wherewithal to go get myself a motorcycle learner's permit. I went and I took the test. And I surprised my dad. I said, hey, dad, I went and took the motorcycle rider's test. He said, what the hell did you do that for? I said, because I want to ride. He said, okay, here's mom's bike. Let's go learn. That's what I did. He took me out to the government center. He taught me the basics, basically the MSF riding course. You know, it, it was a few weeks on this Vulcan 500 Limited, cute little bike. So I started up with about all the oomph of a coffee machine. And uh, then I'd go tooling around with him on this bike. Now, my little brother was getting his license at about the same time because he was a little smarter than I was. That just taught us both. And uh, after a little bit, I decided it was time to get my own motorcycle because there were two bikes and three of us riding. So I went and took the MSF course so I could go get my license and ride a bike by myself. I went and took the wheels up course. You can take it just about anywhere. And uh, it was a breeze because my dad had already taught me. And once I got my license, I went out and picked out this bike. A uh, good, you know, starter bike. I had been riding for a bit. And uh, there's a picture of me on one of these <laughs> as a kid. And the rest is history. Now, as for you and how you should probably get your license, that's going to be a little different. First thing you should do is go get your permit. After you have your permit, go take the wheels up course. Go take the MSF course, the beginner's course, the whatever they call it. It's done everywhere these days. You can go get it at the local dealership. You can go do it at your local college university usually. You know, there are private classes, public classes, you whatever you can find. Go take the wheels up course, the beginner course. Because at the end, they're gonna give you the driving test. And once you have the driving test done, ta-da, you are now allowed to ride in a parking lot. You are officially licensed. Go get yourself a bike. Go sit on as many bikes as you can, as many dealerships as you can. Figure out what you like, what you want to ride. Okay, you want a smaller bike. You want something probably 600 class or less. If you're feeling really confident, you could probably do like an 800 class. Honestly, you don't want something... Ugh, ooh, that's a hell of a bump. You don't want something that you're going to have to survive on. You want something that you're going to learn to ride on. So once you've figured out what you want to sit on while you ride, what kind of cruising you like, whether it's bombing canyon roads at 280 miles an hour, or if you want to cruise along and bumble along and see the scenery, or a mixture of the two, there's a bike for that. You want to go figure out what kind of bike you're looking for, And all that good stuff. And Jesus Christ, it's bothering me. Uh, I need to tighten that back up. And once you've figured out what kind of bike you're looking for, I highly recommend you get on Craigslist. Okay, or, you know, let go or, or whatever. One of those person-to-person -person transactions. And you're going to want to buy your first bike cheap and in cash. Not so cheap. You want something that runs. You want something that drives. You want something that is reliable. Honestly, I'd recommend a cheap Japanese bike, somewhere between the 200 and 600 cc range. All right, a 250, like the one you did in your MSF course, all the way up to like an older model 600. Okay, depending on you know what kind of bike you're going for. If you get to a cruiser like 800. You can suffer through if you've never done anything, but you probably want to do like a 600 or 750 at the most. You're just looking for something that's cheap, the way you want to sit, the way you want to ride. It doesn't matter how pretty it is. You want it to run. You don't care about the shiny chrome because you're going to drop it. All right, period. You're, you're going to drop your first bike. Hell, I dropped this bike. I was lucky. I still had crash guards on it. And uh, I did it as I was pulling out from a parking space. I was stupid enough to leave a lock on the bike. Uh, I left a uh, uh, rotor lock on the bike. So it got half a turn through and the whole bike just juttered down to the ground. But you're going to drop it. So don't worry about how pretty it is. Don't worry about how beautiful the chrome is. Don't worry about the condition so much as the runningness, which will actually make it easier to buy it less expensive. Now you can take your time and pretty it back up if you want. 
But the whole point of buying one of those $1,200 to $2,000 bikes on Craigslist is the fact that when you're done with it, you can turn around and sell it for the same price. That way, you have the cash back to go buy the bike you really want, that, you know, Harley Softail Evo or that, you know, CBR 1000 RR or whatever. You'll have some cash available for it. And that's what you're really looking for, is something that is cheap, reliable, less time working on the bike and more time riding the bike. That's always important because you need to learn your skills. You need to cement those skills and be able to do the stupid stuff that we experienced riders do. But anyway, now that I've said this for the third time, because I keep on messing it up, that's pretty much all I have to say for now. So if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and leave me a like down below. And if you want to see my videos as they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button uh, over the stop sign there. No, on the Sonata because it's more fun. But that's pretty much all I got for now. So I'll see all you guys and gals on the flip side.